everybody, this is Sean Holman from the Truck Trend Network and Truck and Magazine, and today we're uh, with our good friend Gail Banks. And for those of you who've been following our Project Speed Bump online, uh, you've yeah. seen the progression over the last couple of years of our 67 F100, and today is a, uh, a milestone day. because We finally got to the point where uh, we're dropping the truck off with Gail in order for us to uh, put some uh, put some fire in the cylinders, right? Absolutely, to put some engine in the truck. Yeah, so, yeah. so we'll take you over to the truck in a minute, but we wanted to uh, have Gail talk to you about the uh, 630T here, which is the engine that's sitting in our uh, in our F100. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about it, and here it is on the stand, and, and maybe uh, some of the things we have in store for our project. Okay, uh, we've been selling this engine, which we call the 630T, as a military engine, uh, for about going on five years now. Uh, it's the VM Motori 3 liter V6 diesel. Uh, You'll be familiar with that obviously for those As an eco you. diesel. Yeah, yeah. eco diesel from Ram and Grand Cherokee. Uh, Gail buys these and does some upfits for it for some military projects and uh, sells them. And so uh, we thought it would be fun to stick something totally wacky in our 67 F100 and, and do a really high end diesel swap and really show. We could get, I mean, the idea behind this is not only are we following the trends of starting to get into these really high-end diesel swaps, but also we'll be able to create big block torque and power with the fuel economy of a diesel engine in, and be able to pull up some really good times with the drag strip. And eventually we plan on uh, putting a couple turbos, but let's walk yeah. through the basic package and, and go from there. So the basic package is the three liter V6. Uh, what we're go going to do for a speed bump though is our aluminum intake manifold and since this is a pre-emissions car we're going to treat it as a pre-emissions project so the engine dress will look like this if you look at an eco diesel in the truck you can't see most of this in fact we'll show you because the eco diesel that's sitting in the truck right now looks yes. like a factory eco diesel but uh, yes. anthony why don't you come closer and show people how pretty this engine is when it's not covered in all the stuff that comes from the factory these days so what we what we've done so far with this engine, uh, it's in the uh, Badger, which is a Boeing vehicle that goes in the B22 Osprey. Uh, we've also put one in a 2001. We took out a Duramax and put one of these in a 2001 uh, Dually, and it outperforms the Duramax that was there. That is the next step up. These are around 240 horsepower. We have a 302 horsepower, 514 torque version. So in speed bump, we're gonna start out at 240, get everything happy, then we're gonna to go to the 302, 514, uh, and then we're gonna start compound turboing and doing other things. Uh, there'll be an intercooler involved in speed bump that will probably be a bit custom. Uh, as far as the rest of the engine is concerned, it's been pretty well covered. Uh, we did a reveal on this engine a few years before it was available in a, a pickup truck uh, in diesel power. So if you go back in the older issues of diesel power and find the bank 630T, there's a complete reveal of all the insides of this thing, which you know, is pretty uh, cool. Trucktrend.com, you can find mm -hmm. all of the Truck Trend truck in diesel power ALA content, and so you can find that story on there. Yeah. And uh, like Gail was talking about, the factory engine comes with a plastic composite uh, intake plenum. He swaps that out for a uh, aluminum version, so we'll be doing that on ours. Mm -hmm. If you look, the turbo's nestled just behind the rear cylinder here. Fire wall would be right about here. Yeah, and this is a four-wheel drive version, which our truck is, is of course not a four-wheel drive, but we are backing it up with uh, Gail's version of the 6L90 GM six-speed transmission, and so it'll be pretty cool. A lot of flexibility in gear ratios, and this is using Gail's yep. torque converter and your adapter plate from the bell housing in the back of the engine yeah. to the tranny. The torque converter is really an adapter housing, so to speak. The, this is a fabricated steel version. We now have a casting, so it goes from this kind of strange VM pattern uh, <laughs> to about a 300 millimeter volt circle front housing that's on the 6L90. The torque converter is a 300 millimeter sax dual clutch, so you've got plenty of lockup capacity because we're going to put some torque through this. Thing. Oh, yeah. The tranny is basically, it's four to one low gear, got great splits. Good deep low gear, 
get you out of the hole. And the other, the other great thing about it is the guts of the, the, the you buy a new blown supercharged uh, Camaro, that's the gearbox. It'll take a lot of horsepower, a lot of RPM, and a lot of torque. We're not going to buzz it too high, uh, but so it's, it's a torque component. The 6L90 rather than a 6L80 is what I like to put behind everything. So bullet, bulletproof transmission, for those of you who have seen our build, we have a Dynatrac uh, Dana 60 yeah. uh, in the back of it. And uh, so, it goes all the way yeah, through. we've got, it's, yeah. it's beefy from yeah. one end to the other, beefy transmission, beefy rear end. Um, so do you want to walk over and if you guys want to follow yeah. us, we'll, we'll point out the electrical as we, we go, come around but here. Yeah. yeah, basically we did our own uh, ECU. Uh, that'll run anywhere from a one to eight cylinder diesel engine up to 8,000 RPM on an eight cylinder diesel. We use it for racing. We use it for all of our, our military engine, uh, our ship with that. And uh, of course, the intake manifold we developed for military as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's racing technology. So the ECU talks to the transmission through this bridge this speaks GM land and speaks uh, J1939 can to our controller. So there's the electrical so the control of, part of it. A lot of really cool tech that goes in it. So, yeah. you know, the, the engine is familiar, but the electronics and the engine control is all banks and, and all stuff that Gale does here it in just, Austin, California. It, it lets us screw with it <laughs> <laughs> very easily. All right. Let's go look at the truck. Cool. So All follow right. along. We'll take you to uh, another uh, building here on the on the base campus, and uh, you kind of uh, see some of the cool things out here. And it's a beautiful 85 degree day here in sunny Southern California. So I don't know uh, I don't know where you're at, but <laughs> come, on, come on. on. Yeah. And as we're uh, as we're walking, you uh, you might see a couple cool things here and there. The uh, you're working on, you know, you're known for diesels, but you're known for turbocharging, right? And so yeah. here's a perfect example of something you guys are working on well, right now. Well, yeah. The, this, uh, so, EcoBoost 3.5 V6, gas engine, and if you look on the back, it's got a little Banks Power uh, thing. So I know exactly. you guys have been playing with these a little We're bit. We're doing all the EcoBoosts, from the little ones to the big ones. And in fact, uh, you guys have a Mustang you're working on, and for the truck guys who are watching now, uh, we've got our EcoBoost... Uh, project vehicle, the silver truck you guys are probably familiar with the truck in, and uh, you guys have done the tune and the power on that as well. Exactly. We're doing a duke out be between, between a four-cylinder turbo Camaro <laughs> and a four-cylinder turbo Mustang. That's the future, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know, by the way, my Merc is going to get a Coyote and two turbos. And I'm going to take out the old 32 valve V8 with a blower on it and go for a grand. I want a thousand horsepower in this thing. If you're going to be hanging out with uh, banks, then you, uh, you better enjoy turbocharging because there's a lot of cool turbo stuff here. Come on. This is a long video. Huh? Yeah. You're doing it 15 seconds? Come on in. And you guys uh, probably know some of the uh, land speed records that uh, the Banks team has. This is, uh, is kind of cool. This is kind of cool because I'm a truck guy all the way. Yep. Uh, but we, you know, with a streamliner, uh, the Teak Welch and Banks streamliner. We had the fastest piston engine car on the planet for like 20 years. That thing's been 432. And then when John Rock was running GMC, he asked us to develop a sport car, a sport truck image for them. Mm -hmm. So we took an S15 to Bonneville. That was year number one. Mm -hmm. And no turbos, but I intercooled it. And uh, I inter intercooled the hot air coming in, in from the nose. So we got a world record 194 on a 144 record previous. And then they wanted to go 200, so we went back the next year, and now it's called the Cyclone. Yep. And we went 204 two-way and a 210 one-way. So that 
that got that off their plate. <laughs> then that became a production truck, which yeah. you guys kind of legendary all-wheel yeah. drive turbo cyclone. Cyclones and typhoons. The one that I I find, you know, we went there. That went in a trailer. So I decided I want to break that record with a diesel. So we had teamed up with the guys at the Cummins Skunk Works who, who were working on the new common rail engine. Yep. This would be late uh, 90s, 2000, mm -hmm. 2001. We hot rodded the first Cummins common rail mm -hmm. and went uh, 222 one way, 217 two now, way. The cool story about this truck is you guys drove it there Right. Broke the record. With the trailer. With the trailer on the back of all your supplies. Yeah. Broke the record, hooked the trailer back up, and drove home. Right. <laughs> we also drove, drove it all around to all the Cummins facilities in the Midwest, Columbus being, being the prime yeah. one. Uh, and then we took it on the Hot Rod Power Tour <laughs> from Wisconsin to Florida. Yeah. You know. So, so, so Gail was definitely the person to come see when we wanted to put a Hot Rod diesel in our F100. <laughs> so let's go, uh, yeah. let's go show you guys Project Speedo. Alright, back in deep in the bowels of Gale Bank Engineering. We got a little welding going on in here. You might see some cool things along yeah. the way too. So we're working on the diesel dragster. Is this still going to be a super, uh, super turbo setup? Yeah, it's going to go first. Uh, it's going to be a blown 7 liter uh, D Max engine. Then where the Zuni headers are now, we'll put two manifolds with turbos, so it'll be a super turbo. Supercharger on the engine, blowing the two turbos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've done it before, it's not new. Really. Oh, we're in the Jeeps, that's what Oh yeah. 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 Anybody like the old uh, air-cooled tank engines? This is, uh, this is a cool project example. I did for Leno, where we took this old uh, M47 patent tank engine, yeah. and he bought a car with one yeah. of these in it, 820 horsepower, so we took off the carburetors. Look at this fan, come check this out. Look at these fans. Oh yeah. These cast fans. It's like helicopter uh, turbines. So we twin turboed and fuel injected it. <laughs> but we made it look old timey. Yeah. It looks proper. It's very cool in that car. Yeah, in the, in the tank car. He yeah. It. Jay Leno's tank car. Yeah, if you uh, haven't seen it, Google Jay Leno tank car. There's a million videos and uh, it's built all with like dump truck chassis parts and it's, uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a 20 tenth scale uh, Ford Roadster. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the old blown Chrysler fuel motor, you got to have one of those around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just art right there. Well, that's a 50s, that's a 50s vintage top fuel engine. So, very cool. So right through these doors, you can see uh, Project Speed Bump. And it's probably been a while since you guys have seen it. Uh, we haven't done any videos on it in a while. We've been working on 100 things. But uh, since you've seen it last, we've, uh, we've done, we finished the uh, paint body on it. Yeah. Uh, TMI did an amazing, gorgeous interior on it. It's got, finally got the right wheels and tires. Sports Line did an amazing uh, set of wheels. They're uh, 18s, and we fit them 295 Nitto uh, uh, NT555 G2s at all four corners. And we also have a set of drag radials, so we might uh, see about getting some steel wheels for the back just yeah. to put the drag radials on. So it was yeah. really mean at the track. I'm all over that. So it's, it's not quite sitting, uh, not all the weight's on it yet, it'll probably be about an inch lower in the back, it'll probably be a couple inches lower in the front. For those of you who don't know, we have a Crown Vic uh, front clip on it. Uh, LGE CTS did a great job with the, the paint. Uh, we used Exalta paint on it. Uh, again, the TMI interior, wheel with brakes. Come, you know, come check this out. We used a painless wiring harness with the Dakota Digital VHX uh, gauge cluster system on it. Um, so it's all coming together. You can see the cutout right now. We're waiting for parts for Vintage Air. We'll have a Vintage Air AC in here. We've got an I Did It column. So it's coming together. It's a little bit further along than the last time you guys saw it. We've got a Line-X in the bed now, and we've got a, a Boyd Welding a custom aluminum fuel tank. And all of this wouldn't be possible without the help from Gail. 
uh, and especially LMC truck for all the parts, all these miscellaneous trim and pieces and brackets and things. Um, wouldn't wouldn't have been able to happen without uh, without their support and their help and, and the team at LGE CTS and, and the team at Banks now. So we've been getting you know, this thing ready. We get the hard part. We, can, <laughs> yeah. we get to figure, figure out the wiring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you guys need to have fun. This with is it. where everybody chokes. Yeah, you know? well, and I hope we don't choke. Oh, uh, me too. So, yeah. <laughs> we've got a, a Dynatrack 60 in the back, so a massive Dana 60 base rear end. Uh, we had it narrowed, so you can see we have a really nice dish on the rear wheels. We're running an 18 by 10 and a half forge line CV uh, 3C um, with a uh, polished tubes and matte bronze center. So it's hard to tell on the, on the phone, but in person in the sun, it's amazing. Those aren't actually gray centers that match the paint. Those are actually matte bronze that kind of bring out the uh, bring out the red in it um, of the roof and the red of the calipers. And so forge line, uh, great company to work yeah. with, and, and amazing wheels and. Uh, the Nitto tires on here should be awesome, especially when we use their drag radials. So, yeah, let's uh, let's pop open the, uh, the hood here and show you what we got in store. Yeah, well, so not quite as pretty as the engine we just saw in your showroom. Exactly, <laughs> but it will be uh, prettier, actually. Yeah, so as you guys can see, there's a ton of the emissions equipment and plates and covers and all this. This is basically what a stock engine looks there's like. There's a lot of acoustic stuff. This is noise damping for for the injection pump. Drives off the nose of the camshaft, one of the camshafts here. The EGR cooler and, and valving is all going to be gone. Uh, so we're going to put our uh, Jeep front drive, accessory drive on it that we did for the narrow Jeeps, 26 inch, inside to inside on those frame rails. Intercooler will go where the radiator is right now, it'll, it'll move back, and the intercooler will be here, and here you've got the uh, condenser for the AC system. And as you can tell, it's so. still kind of pieced together. We, you know, it's not totally figured out placement, but we wanted to mock it up, so when we dropped it off to Gail and his team, they right. have an idea of real estate and what to work with. And you can kind of see the wires Right now, we wired the entire chassis except for the ignition system and the engine. So what you're seeing here is the painless harness, as well as the Dakota Digital VHX uh, sensors and, mm -hmm. and wires right here. Um, and those are all the wires that Gail and his team will splice into there. So as you can imagine, it's a bit of a Frankenstein. We have a painless harness that spans about you know 15 years of Fords. We right. have a I did it column where we had to hook up the turn signals and hazards exactly. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. We've got Gail's engine controller, computer, and, and his ignition system that we're putting on it. We've got a vintage air AC system going on it. Yep. And so, you know, it's it's sort of a Frankenstein of sorts, but we literally, you know, this, this truck we picked up, the, the, the genesis of this project really started over three years ago when Gail and I were kind of joking about what would be cool. And, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you a little... Nobody builds these. Yeah. Let's start with that. You yeah. don't see a lot of this. So, so Gail and I both have an affinity for this body style. And we both really liked it. I don't know if we've ever publicly told the story. But, uh, you know, Gail had come out with the 630T uh, from his, his military engine program and said, you know, I'd really love to put that in something fun. And I said, well, I really want to get, you know, a 67 to 72 F100 right. built because they're underappreciated and they're just starting to go up in value. And it would really piss a lot of people off to put a GM Trans and an Italian diesel engine and, and you know, yeah. mix it up. It's so wrong. <laughs> it, it's, it's so wrong, it's awesome. It's so wrong that it's a perfect hot rod. I, I mean, this it's the modern it's hot rod. the definitive statement of yeah. what hot rodding is all about. Make it different, make it cool as hell. Yeah. And if you hate diesels, this isn't for you. Yeah, uh, you won't get there's it. There's a whole bunch of people out there who get what diesel is and all about. Don't worry, for those of you purists out there, this thing was headed to the junkyard. It, we literally, the cab was rotted out. You can see uh, photos in our previous stories of eight parts of the build yeah. online at trucktrend.com right now or in Trucking Magazine. Um, and so Gail and I were at a party and he said, you know, are you going to get this truck? And we started talking. I said, well, you know, I might, I might go crazy. I'm still thinking about it. And about six months later, we ended up at another industry function. And Gail said, did you get the truck yet? And I said, oh, you're serious? And he says, go crazy. Yeah, and I, I bought the yeah, truck. Right. I found the truck and bought it about uh, three or four weeks later. And I said, all right, well, if you want to do the engine, let's, let's do this build because I think it could be really cool. Yeah. So yeah. We, uh, we started it a couple of years ago, and it ended up going all the way down to two frame rails. 
and having the frame rails blasted and repowder coated, it's a completely new vehicle we've built up from there. All around the heart of it being the, the 630T, which is uh, Gail's version of the Viamatori engine. So if, right. you, if you look in here, it's amazing what we did. Is we've got a Crown Victoria front clip on it, and uh, Offroad Evolution did all the welding to adapt the kit to this. We have a Borgeson uh, uh, shaft and U-joint to uh, go from the, the I did it column down to the Crown Vic. But if you really look down here, Anthony, you can see these custom engine mounts. When uh, Gail and the team mounted the engine and trans in here, they actually built custom motor mounts that uh, adapt to the same pedestal that the Crown Victoria's engine sits on. So it's a really OE, super clean appearance. Exactly. A lot of people exactly. are running big blocks in uh, on those Crown Vic uh, clips in these trucks, and the big blocks have you know, a ton of torque and are heavier than what we're doing here, so it should be fine holding up to well, it. Well, you know, the thing that's interesting here is this Crown Vic uh, front clip is the same thing in my Marauder sitting out front. Now we know how to mount d different <laughs> engines. Yeah, the right. Coyote engine j won't go in the Crown Vic either. Yeah. We're going to have to do this all over again for that. That becomes a swap. So you guys did kind of a modular mount that you're able to to, uh, to change with the application. So right, um, exactly. and you guys can see here what we did with the brakes is we've got actually a Willwood total master uh, manual master cylinder. And the reason we did that is because uh, the vacuum situation you get with diesels, you need to have a, an accessory vacuum pump to drive that pressure for hydro boost or right. or uh, a typical power brake system. We went with full manual because Willwood makes an incredibly great uh, manual system, really good feedback on this. We've got that along with their um, proportioning valve to the rear is right here. And we did the 14 inch brakes in the front with six piston calipers and the 12.8s in the rear with four piston calipers. But what we did was the braking system is 100% separate from the engine and drivetrain. Yeah. And we did that on purpose with the manual master so that no matter what happens, if we push it too far and have a little too much fun, we'll still have full braking uh, ability under it. And so that was one of the decisions we made early on was to, to go with the full manual uh, system on here. So uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask and we'll pop on uh, later. Anthony, has anything come up that people are interested in? All right, so uh, this is Project Speed Bump and be sure to check out Project Speed Bump on Facebook or search it on Truck Trend Network. And uh, pretty exciting day because finally the truck is here at, at Gail Banks' shop and uh, they're gonna start working on it and we'll have an update soon. And we plan on doing a Facebook Live for the first fire. So we wanna be here to fire it up so you guys can see it and enjoy with us. And we'll, we'll also have it on uh, our uh, website, bankspower.com as, as we go. So that'll be like daily stuff. Yep. Uh, we're not gonna, there's gonna be really strong stuff. <laughs> Be pretty that cool. Sean's presenting. We're just going to show you a little incidental stuff as we go. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit behind the scenes. Yeah, of, uh, our our uh, yeah. our diesel swap here. So, thanks everybody for watching live on Facebook, and uh, we appreciate all your support. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to answer on the comment or ask on the comment section. We'll uh, we'll follow up with you throughout the day and answer anything that uh, that you have. Thanks so much.